We use truth tables to list all the possible scenarios for a given statement and to analyze whether the statement is true or false under those circumstances. In order to complete any truth table successfully, we need to know our four basic rules. The first rule is that the negation of a true statement is false and the negation of a false statement is true. The second rule is that an OR statement, which is the V type symbol, is only false if both components are false. The third rule is that an AND statement, which is an upside down V symbol, is only true if both components are true. And the last one and trickiest rule is the implication, the arrow. An if-then statement is only false if the antecedent, the first part, is true, but the consequent, the second part, is false. I like to think of that one as the promise is made and then it's broken. In this particular truth table, we are looking at the statement not P, excuse me, not Q or P. So there are two logic symbols in this statement, the negation and the OR. That means that we're going to be using the rules for negation here and OR, the first two rules. Now to set up your truth table when you have two component statements, P and Q are the components of this larger compound statement. When you have two components, the truth values in those first two columns are always going to be the same. P is going to be true half the time and false half the time. So true, true, false, false. And then Q is going to be true, false, true, false. The reason why we use this pattern is because it covers all of our bases. Either both components are true, or P is true and Q is false, or P is false and Q is true, or finally both components are false. Next we need to list out the portions of this statement that we want to analyze. Generally speaking, you start by listing out any negations of components first. So I have here in the next column the negation of Q. And we're going to use the column for Q to determine that column. Then after we've done that, we're going to look at the whole statement because in this case it's a relatively simple compound statement and there's only one more logic symbol, the OR. Generally speaking, I want to have one column heading for each logic symbol. And each column heading should reflect only one new symbol that wasn't already listed in the previous column headings. In this case, the OR is the only new thing. Not Q is in a previous column and P is in a previous column. Okay, so now we're going to look at the column with not Q and we're going to fill in the truth values using what we know about Q and the rule that the negation of true is false and the negation of false is true. So in this first box we look at Q being true and we say well that means that not Q must be false. We see that Q is false in the next row, so that means not Q, its opposite, must be true. In the next box, we see that Q is true, so not Q must be false. And in the next box, we see that Q is false, so not Q must be true. So we used the Q column to get the not Q column. Now, in the next column, we need to join together the not Q and the P using the OR conjunction or connective. So what we're going to do is look at the table 
the column that has P and the column that has not Q and we're going to apply our OR rule that our compound statement is only going to be false if both components are false. Looking at P and not Q in the first row, one is true and the other is false. So that means that our resulting statement must be true. Looking at the next row, P is true and not Q is true. They're both true. And remember, all we care about is where they're both false will make it false. Otherwise, it's always true. The third row, ah, here, they're both false. So that means that's the only time when we're going to get a false or statement. And then in the net last row, we have false and true. So we're back to true again because, again, only false if both are false. So what we just found out is that in these four different scenarios, these are the corresponding truth values.